cycle tracking to help you get pregnant faster. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI, and this video is being released during National Infertility Awareness Week. So really wanna bring you some of the basics about cycle tracking, which is what we're gonna go over today. Today I'm talking about calendar method and other methods of fertility awareness. Before we jump in, I just wanna say a huge thanks as this channel is growing. You guys are supporting me and I am so appreciative. If you would subscribe, like, share, and comment below, we get all of our content ideas directly from you. So diving in and thinking about cycle tracking, the idea is that knowing when your cycle is coming can be helpful if you're trying to get pregnant, yes, but also if you just want to understand your body's hormonal health. If we think about your period, having a period is just one aspect of the menstrual cycle, meaning what has to happen is the brain, ovaries, and uterus are all communicating perfectly. If we want to simplify it, at the start of a month, the ovary has a group of follicles that are available. I like to say that they come out of the vault inside the ovary. Each follicle has an egg. The follicle is a fluid-filled structure you can see on ultrasound. Well, the brain's going to send out follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and FSH is well-named because it gets a follicle to grow. It stimulates it. So FSH talks to the ovary. The ovary then starts growing an egg, and this egg starts to make estrogen. Well, that estrogen rises throughout the follicular phase, which is this first half of the cycle when a follicle is growing. That estrogen is causing the lining of the uterus to grow and develop and get ready for an implantation. In addition, what is happening is that estrogen is also typically giving you energy, improving your concentration, and increasing your libido as it gets to those peak levels. When your estrogen is at its peak, which is above 200 picograms for 50 hours, the brain is going to sense that that level must indicate a mature egg and send out a surge of LH or luteinizing hormone. Now the first surge of LH allows the follicle to rupture, the egg to be released, and then the follicle reforms and becomes what's known as a corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum makes progesterone throughout the luteal phase. So really interesting that the phases of the menstrual cycle are named after the follicular structure. So it's a follicle growing an egg, and that's the follicular phase, and then it's a corpus luteum making progesterone, and that's the luteal phase. So after ovulation, you now have progesterone. The follicular phase is an estrogen-only phase. The luteal phase has both estrogen and progesterone. Important to note is that progesterone is made in pulses throughout the luteal phase because LH is sent out from the brain in pulses, so it's a direct response. Well, if you don't get pregnant, that corpus luteum can only live for about two weeks. It's going to collapse. Your progesterone levels are going to drop, and then you're going to get a period, and the cycle will start all over again. So having a regular, predictable cycle tells us that the brain ovary communication is in check, and so many things can actually come in and interfere. Not just hormonal things that we think about, like thyroid, but also anything that can come in and interfere with the brain. The hypothalamus is the central command station of the brain, and it's constantly interpreting signals from all over your body. So if you are in a place where you have high levels of inflammation, you're really stressed, you're not sleeping, there are so many different signals that can come back, and it's almost like having static interference on the radio. Central command cannot hear the other signals quite as well. Well, when you're tracking your cycle, the point of tracking it is more than just marking down when it's coming on an app and letting the app do the work for you. Because you may be interested to know that 21% of apps using the calendar method are actually incorrectly identifying the fertile window. So whether you're tracking your cycle to just know about your health, to try to get pregnant, or to try to prevent pregnancy, understanding what your fertile window is and isn't, and understanding if your cycle is regular or if there's any abnormalities that could be red flags that something bigger could be going on, well, that's data about your body that you really, really want to know. And this is why I don't ever recommend app tracking alone. It can be a great adjunct, but you also need to track your cycles and see if that data correlates. And if it does and the app is accurate for you, then whichever app you're using, you can feel more confident is giving you an accurate fertile window. But you can't just make that assumption right off the bat. So if we're thinking about how you track your cycle, I think it's important to know, well, what's the simple calendar method? And this is what most apps use. This is based on the idea that the corpus luteum can live for two weeks. So you're going to take your total cycle length and you're going to subtract 14 days, and that's going to be the predicted day of ovulation. So this is going to differ if your cycle is 24 days long, then 
you're going to subtract 14 and you're going to ovulate around day 10 versus if your cycle is 30 days long, now you're going to ovulate around day 14. So you can, if your cycle is 30 days long, now you're going to ovulate on day 16. And you can see these are actually quite different and your app may give you an incorrect time depending on how long your cycle is. Well, the fertile window is defined as the five days before and then the day of ovulation. The egg can only live for 24 hours inside your body, and sperm can live in the female reproductive tract for up to five days. And even though that's a true fact, and that's why that's the entire fertile window, the odds of conception are much greater if you're having intercourse while the egg has already been released. So trying to have intercourse on the day of ovulation has the highest odds of helping you get pregnant. And that's why tracking your cycle can be advantageous. Beyond just tracking with calendar method, tracking with methods of fertility awareness, these can help you get pregnant faster. And that's shown. Using any type of fertility awareness is better than using none. Now, which is better... That's going to be honestly a personal choice and what's easy for you, what you can interpret and what's going to fit into your life. We do know that using two of them can even improve that effectiveness of determining the fertile window even better. So the ways to determine your fertility awareness, this is using your body's physical signs and symptoms in order to determine when ovulation is occurring. So this is going to be cervical mucus monitoring, ovulation predictor kits or OPKs, and basal body temperature tracking. So let's start with BBT or basal body temperature. The idea here is that after you ovulate, when progesterone is being made, progesterone raises your core body temperature. And so when you have an increase in your body temperature, you can confirm that you did in fact ovulate. So the temperature has to rise by at least 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it's elevated the rest of your cycle because of progesterone. Well, BBT tracking requires you to take your temperature every morning before you get out of bed, before you have a sip of water, before you check your cell phone, and you will see your temperature rise after ovulation. Now, if you're really nuanced, you'll actually see your temperature dip around 24 hours before ovulation. So with that LH surge, your temperature is the lowest and then it's going to rise. So Although a lot of times people say BBT is just helpful in hindsight, confirming ovulation did occur, that's true. If you're tracking it really well and accurate and you see that dip, it can be predictive also. And now we do have some technology where there's wearables that can make it easier to monitor your temperature because old school, it used to be quite difficult. Word to the wise though, is that things can interfere with your temperature. So being sick, having a fever, drinking alcohol, taking progesterone or other type of fertility medications, those can interfere. If you look at the data, about 30% of women using BBT were able to predict their exact day of ovulation, but 94% could predict it within a four day range. And if we think about how the fertile window is the five days before and the day of ovulation, then that is pretty good at detecting your fertile window and helping you time intercourse course at the right time. Cervical mucus monitoring is based on the premise that your body at its peak estrogen level is going to change the cervical mucus to allow sperm to enter into the uterus easier. Cervical mucus has four different types and it's based on the sensation and then the properties of the mucus. So type one, your vulva is going to feel dry and you're not going to have any secretions. Type number two, your vulva is going to start to feel damp or wet, but you're still not going to see any secretions. Type number three, your vulva is going to feel damp and smooth, but you're starting to see thicker or creamier, some maybe white cervical mucus. But your type number four is when your vulva is gonna feel wet and slippery, and this is where you have that transparent, stretchy, egg white cervical mucus, and that is ovulation day. Your type four cervical mucus is when you should time intercourse. Now, when you're checking, you don't need to put your fingers inside or pull anything out. You can just look on the outside. I recommend wiping with toilet paper first before you go to the bathroom because cervical mucus can fall into the toilet, especially that type four. And then we've got the ovulation predictor kits, and these are some of my favorite. So OPKs or ovulation predictor kits are detecting that ovulation trigger or that LH surge. So when you're using an OPK, this is a urinary based kit that you're going to pee on like a pregnancy test, and you're looking for the first positive. So it's detecting LH. I recommend that you use these between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. LH is released from the brain in the early morning and it has to filter through your kidneys and get into your urine. And one issue I see is that sometimes people take them first thing in the morning and they may actually never get a positive even though they're ovulating. Remember that the OPK is detecting the LH surge, but LH will continue to be made. So once you get a positive, you don't need to keep using them. 
And once you get a positive, your goal is to have intercourse that day and the next day if you are trying to conceive. In about 7% of cycles, you will have a false positive LH, and this is typically seen with either PCOS or low ovarian reserve. And these are circumstances where your baseline LH is going to be elevated, and it might make it more difficult to detect a surge or true elevation. And then some other body signs that ovulation is occurring can be spotting around ovulation, and that's from a drop in estrogen from when that follicle ruptures. Some women have middle schmerz or ovulatory pain. You actually feel the follicle rupturing. You can get labial fullness from increased blood flow to the labia due to that increase in estrogen. Some women can have increased pelvic or groin lymph nodes on the side you ovulated specifically. Of course, we already said increased libido, breast tenderness due to the high estrogen and due after the fact due to high progesterone and then increase in taste and sensitivity of smell after progesterone is being made. So those are some other fertility signs that you can look out for if you are trying to get to know your body and your cycle a little bit better. Ask whatever questions you have below about cycle tracking, trying to get pregnant. I have a follow-up video coming soon about non-hormonal options to use cycle tracking to try to prevent a pregnancy. Thank you friends for all your support. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast, or you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD.